Hello and welcome to the Piano Masterclasses for YouTube Symphony Orchestra Auditions. I'm Lisa Yui and I'm a faculty at Manhattan School of Music in New York City where we're in right now. So I know that all of you have to prepare at least one movement from Beethoven's Opus 57 Piano Sonata, the Appassionata. And so in this video, I'll be giving you a couple of pointers on the first movement. Uh, the Appassionata, uh, was a nickname that was not given by Beethoven himself. It was his publishers, and Beethoven himself actually despised this nickname. Nevertheless, it stuck, and certainly the sonata is very passionate, but also it has elements, I think, of tragedy and desperation, which I think we should try to convey in our performances of the sonata. Now, I find that the most, one of the most challenging things about uh, this first movement is that it has so many disparate elements in rhythm and texture and harmony that quite often many people perform each of these sections with a completely different tempo and it can become a little chaotic. And so we of course want to avoid this. Um, of course, because for example, the first and the second themes are so different, we, there will be a, a slight change in tempo, right? But nevertheless, we do want to maintain somewhat of a steady pulse. Uh, note that Beethoven, in the exposition, the section before the repeat, he only marks two tempo changes. One is a poco ritardando, and another right after that is a fermata, but that's it. So I think there's an underlying pulse, a sort of a heartbeat, that goes through the entire movement that we want to maintain. And it's going to help us create wonderful tension and it also will hold all the different parts together. So my suggestion would be, why don't you go through this first movement and count in eighth notes, 12 beats per measure. And you'll see, I think it will help you hold everything together. Of course, you have to make it a little flexible. Okay, so here's an example. So when you practice this way, you'll realize, for example, the passage that leads into the second theme will lead much, much more naturally if you listen to this uh, 12 pulses. Did you hear how the repeated notes in the left hand transform into the accompaniment of the second theme? It will really help you sort of hold everything together if you listen to these, uh, the, the line, the chain of the, the eighth notes. You can also try practicing in two beats. One, two, one, two. You can also try it in four beats, right? And of course, after you're really comfortable with this, you could uh, internalize that pulse so that it becomes much, much more natural and flexible. But you may discover when you practice it this way that you may not have been waiting long enough during the measures with repeats, or you may have been playing passages too fast. I find that this passage, quite often people sort of throw themselves into the abyss and uh, they lose all sense of pulse and they even play faster. And you don't want to play this passage faster than written. You don't have to, and it's much more difficult. 
it's already difficult. So it will help you calm down when you actually have a pulse in the section and you know which notes are playing on uh, which beat. And it'll help you really, really uh, sort of ground yourself. In regards to the closing theme of the exposition, the melody is this. And because there are so many notes in 16th notes, it, the temptation is to play every single note very, very loud. Which is really tiring, it's really difficult to play up to tempo, and you can't hear the melody. So why don't you try practicing this passage, emphasizing the melody? You can sort of uh, relax on the other notes, the non-melody notes. And so when you play up to tempo, easier to play up to tempo and you hear the melody and so it's easier and it sounds better, which is always a great combination. Now, another aspect of the sonata that I would like to talk about other than the unified pulse is the dynamics. This sonata is, I think it has a reputation of being very muscular and strong and loud, but the fact of the matter is uh, I find that many of the performances are much too loud. Now, if you compare the number of measures that Beethoven writes, pianissimo or piano, against the number of measures that are forte or fortissimo, you'll find that the measures that are soft uh, is, are overwhelmingly larger, the number, than the measures that are loud. And so let's even look at the measures in which Beethoven writes forte, which is at the a tempo section. We have... Part, which is basically two measures jam-packed with 16th notes. And the left hand plays very, very low. This is the area with the thick strings in the piano. And so even if you don't try, it's going to sound quite loud. You don't have to force yourself to play loudly. Also, two measures after that, we have a fortissimo. So you don't want to play louder than what you're going to play in the fortissimo. In the fortissimo section, we have chords down here in the left hand, where it's loud, and the right hand plays chords spanning almost the entire piano. And if you're going to use pedal, which I do recommend, you don't really have to sort of work so hard to make a loud sound. it has to be much louder than that and I really wasn't working too hard and so why don't you go over all the passages that are written forte or fortissimo and make sure that of course you want to make it intense but make certain that it's uh, you're not killing the instrument so that you can't even hear individual notes now one final point that I want to talk about is the coda in the coda, Beethoven writes più allegro, which literally means more fast or faster, which does not mean go crazy, go as fast as you can. And I think it's important to know approximately what tempo you want to take this coda in. I, I find that a very useful place is near the end where we have this offbeat sforzando and then sort of this kind of a jabbing theme in both hands. And it's such a wonderful sforzando, right? This offbeat, mba ba ba, mba ba ba, mba ba ba, mba ba ba, mba di da di da di da di da. And we really want to emphasize this. And if you go too fast, you're not going to be able to hear this. And this is approximately the tempo I like to take it. So you can translate that tempo to the beginning of the, of the coda. And I think the opening cadence, you don't have to play it so quickly because we want to hear that closure.
Make sure that you plan it very, very carefully, that tempo. And I think that it doesn't really have to be that much faster than that. It certainly was più allegro. It was faster than the opening section. So I hope um, some of those comments have helped you. And I wish you best, best of luck in your auditions. Thank you.